Monarch, Legacy of Monsters, an Apple original series. The world is on fire. I decided to do something about it. On November 17th. This place, it's not ours. Believe me. The most massive event of the year arrives. If you come with me, you'll know everything, I promise. Oh my God, go, go, go! Monarch, Legacy of Monsters. Streaming November 17th, only on Apple TV+. Plus. Vaginas are absolute magic. And Ollie is here to give them the respect they deserve. That means shame-free supplements made with clinically studied ingredients to keep your pH in check. And your pleasure a priority. Put yourself on top. Go to Ollie.com today. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Hey, you are listening to Oh Crap Parenting with me, your host, Jamie Gorlacki. This is a podcast for conscious parents who drop the F-bomb a lot. Hey, hey, you guys. Welcome, welcome. My uh, voice is a little raspy today. I've spent so much time out in the woods. (laughs) Yesterday here in Rhode Island, it was like hot as Hades. And then today, woke up and it's like 60 degrees. It's really nice to have a break in the humidity and the heat. So today I want to talk about a couple of things. Mostly I want to talk about transitions as we are heading back to school. No matter what your situation, I know for a lot of you guys, your child has been in like daycare or preschool throughout the summer. But for a lot of people, this is a huge transition, maybe going into preschool or kindergarten Whatever your situation is, even if you've just like been on vacation and your child has to go back to daycare, these transitions are pretty sticky. Before we get into that, though, I do want to say, so over the weekend, my mom was hospitalized again. And funny enough, my sister, well, not funny, but my sister got a bug bite, a random bug bite that made her face completely swell up. I wish I could show you guys pictures. It is so bizarre. She couldn't even see. She couldn't drive. And they actually did a a CT scan to make sure that whatever was going on wasn't in her brain. And, you know, my sister's husband died recently and I started to freak out because I was like, oh my God, she's in Oregon. What about her kids? And so she and I had a, a great talk about what would happen you know, to her kids. And I just want to remind you guys, I've talked about this before in a whole episode, but I want to remind you guys, get a will. If you don't have a will, your kids could just go anywhere and put your house, your car, you can put all of those things in a trust so that should something happen to you, that things won't be tied up in probate. And this is really important. (laughs) When my mom had her first stroke, she was in charge of all the paperwork, all the banking, and she had a stroke. She had no memory. It was a nightmare trying to get passwords, going to the bank. So I really encourage you guys not only to have a will, (laughs) but make sure that you have all your passwords, including your phone, and give that to a trusted person just in case something happens to you the people left behind can have easy access to all your stuff. And it just became really apparent. You know, I've always done this because I'm a single mom, very careful about like, what would happen to Pascal? What would happen to my money? What would happen to my house? But I think it's something that we overlook, especially if you're in a relationship and you're young and you're like, I don't need to think about this, but you really do. So I just wanted to say that. (laughs) All right. Let's move on to the transitions. So again, no matter what situation you are in, I want to remind you that our little ones, particularly under six, they have a really hard time with transitions. So don't back yourself into a corner as we're edging in. I think this will be released probably the first week. Yeah, first week of August. If you're going back to school in August or if you're going back to school in September or whatever, again, your situation is, you really want to leave a lot of buffer for your child to acclimate to the new schedule. They just don't do well. And I'm finding in my client work 
and online. People are backing like their holiday. They're backing their vacation up against a deadline. And they're like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, she'll be fine. You know, she's got one day. I was working with a client who they like flew in from a cross country trip and the child had two days over 4th of July, which is like a big holiday, right? And then she had to go to a new camp. And so I was talking to the mom and I was like, dude, two days isn't enough. Like she needs some time to acclimate. So I just wanted to put that warning out. No matter what, you want to start edging your child into earlier bedtimes, earlier wake-ups. So, you know, over the summer, we tend to like sleep in, right? We tend to have later nights and we really need these little guys in line with whatever the schedule is going to be. And a lot of times what I find is that, you know, as parents, of course, (laughs) we're so tired. We love it when they sleep in, but sleeping in isn't really great if you guys have to be out of the house at seven, you know, so you want to start that schedule. You want to make sure there's plenty of room in the morning. Like, you know, maybe that means getting to bed earlier, but it also is just really great if you guys can have morning time. So many of my clients are struggling right now with like, everybody kind of gets up and they have to be in the car within minutes. And so that's not ideal. (laughs) I may be obvious, but I still need to say it. But I also wanted to bring up sometimes when our kids wake up, they are grumpy. And, you know, go like they really have no reason to be grumpy, right? Like they don't pay bills. <laughs> they have no weight on their shoulders, but we're humans and we wake up grumpy. And so I just want to remind you of my trick. I call it stop, drop, and roll. I've talked about it before on this podcast. But when your child is grumpy, or just wakes up on the wrong side of the bed. And this can often happen with that like clusterfuck of going back to school, right? It's like early, they got to be out of the house. It, It can be stressful. Lean into that grumpy. So think about you when you get grumpy, when you're like, you know what? Just nothing's going right. (laughs) Like everything's wrong. And you're like, "Mm, mm, mm." it never helps if somebody tells you, well, you know, you just have to get over it, right? Or, you know, like calm down or whatever. (laughs) So with our children, when they are grumpy, we want to lean into that. And I always tell the story, Pascal was probably about three and he woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I don't know what his deal was, but like everything was wrong. I would make him like yolky eggs. And he was like, "Mm, I don't want yolky eggs. And He was just like having just a really hard time for no reason. And, you know, of course I was like, buddy, come on, we got to go. We got to get out of the house. Like, you know, buckle up, man. (laughs) And I went into his room and he was just so overwhelmed by whatever was going on. And so I said, all right, you know what? I was about to give him the mom speech (laughs) and I was looked at his little face and I was like, oh man, poor guy. And I said, you know what, buddy, let's snuggle. And we were late for a daycare drop off. And I call it stop, drop and roll. Like you just have to stop, drop to the floor, snuggle your little one and lean into that grumpy. Because if you try to just go over it, if you just try to pretend like nothing's going on, it's not going to make anything better. Yeah. And sometimes our kids in those moments, they just need connection and we're so busy. We're doing all the things you know, packing the lunchbox and trying to get out of the house. So when we're going through these transitions to preschool, to kindergarten, to whatever, if you find your child is overwhelmed, stop, drop, and roll. Just love them, snuggle them, and lean into it. Monarch Legacy of Monsters, an Apple original series. The world is on fire. I decided to do something about it. On November 17th. This place, it's not ours. Believe me. The most massive event of the year arrives. If you come with me, you'll know everything, I promise. Oh my God, go, go, go! Monarch Legacy of Monsters, streaming November 17th, only on Apple TV+. Plus. But on that note, a patron had asked a question about transitions. And so I want to read the whole question because I think it's really important. So 
Hi, Jamie. I would love to hear an episode on managing the transition, moving up from one school to another. My son is leaving his pre-K and his best friend of the last two years, and they won't be in the same school with him again until high school. Both kids are nervous and sad about being apart. I think it's important to keep investing in the friendship, and so does the other mom. We live pretty close by and could do sports together and playgrounds after school. My husband doesn't think it's as important to keep things going, but I really want to bridge this transition of schools and foster their relationship as teammates, neighborhood friends. How important do you think this is? How can we help with kindergarten nerves and missing old friends and teachers? My son makes friends easily, but it will be a much bigger school and many kids may know each other from being at other schools pre-K, which we did not attend because we had them in another program. (laughs) Thanks for weighing in. Okay, so I think this is a really important question because this bridges more than just this particular transition. We feel very pressured as parents. Everything's very immediate, right? Like in this moment, it feels like parenting and your child their hopes, their dreams, their life, right? It feels very important. But I want to remind you that childhood is long. It really is. My son is going to be 18 next year and I'm still very actively parenting. And childhood goes on for a really long time. So these things that feel so important, and I talk about this in the the framework of a lot of times I think people do too many activities with their kids too many big like vacations or you know Disney, things like that. And I think for the under six crowd, again, it's really not that important. Like there's so many more years coming up, you guys. You have six to 12, which is that gardening phase, which is so much fun when your kid can like tell you things and share their feelings and you can actually have these conversations. Under six, we are still building that foundation of just boundaries, schedule, routine, And so with this mama's question, I do think it's important to foster friendships. And I do think in this age of technology and things moving really fast, I think it is really important to nurture friendships. But I ask you guys, think back. Do you remember your friends in kindergarten? Over the bigger scope of life, your child is going to make plenty of friends. So I'm kind of with your husband on this, <laughs> is I really don't think that it's a big deal if you let some of these friendships go because they're not going, not necessarily. I mean, they could, you know, some people are friends with the people they were friends with in kindergarten, but largely I don't even remember. Like I'm not even friends with a lot of people from high school, right? So childhood is long and I don't think you have to focus on bridging this friendship It is hard. It is hard. Your son is going to be sad. We leave friends. People move. I moved a lot when I was a kid. So maybe my perspective is a little skewed on this. Your child's going to be fine. They're going to meet new friends in kindergarten. And it really is hard. You know, as a homeschooler, neighborhood friends are awesome. But the reality is, if you're in the school system, you're going to have to go along with school. Like there's going to be events, plays, musical what do you call it? Like band things, you know, musical instrument events. (laughs) So you're going to be kind of with that, you know, you're going to be not stuck, but you have to move with the crowd of school. So I wouldn't necessarily put so much focus on trying to bridge that friendship. I would put more focus on like, Hey, but yeah, it is scary. Everything is scary. Going to kindergarten is scary. Going to first grade is scary. Any new situation is going to be very scary for your child. And so we lean into that and we say, yeah, it's going to be scary. And always use the and. And I know you can do it. And I know you're going to make friends. And then, of course, you know, if you guys want to keep that friendship going in the neighborhood, I think neighborhood friends are key. We don't have so many neighborhood friend situations anymore, I feel like. You know, like so many kids are in. I mean, we've talked about this, right? Like so many kids are in sports and activities and structured activities that they don't necessarily, we don't have that neighborhood thing. My honest advice is I would keep the friendship going, but I wouldn't put like a ton of focus on it. And like, we have to keep this friendship going. If it works, it works. If it's easy, it's easy. And if not, 
your child will make plenty of friends in kindergarten. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. <laughs> okay, going back to the transition, I was just thinking, like as I'm recording, I was just thinking about how, you know, Pascal always was an early riser. And I want to go back to the notion of training your child to wake up a little bit earlier because it really sets up the day. So Pascal used to wake up in utero. He would wake up at 5.30. He would like start doing cartwheels in my uterus. <laughs> and so I knew I would have an early waker upper. And he was religiously woke up between 5.30 and 5.36. And I was never a morning person till this. <laughs> and even with the time change, so weird. Whenever daylight savings hit, it would still be 5.30. I was like, how do you know? <laughs> so at first I hated it. I would be like, dude, go play with fire, go play with knives. Like seriously, I was offering him fire and knives to just like, let me sleep a little bit longer. But it ended up being great when he did go to daycare, when he did, you know, he went to kindergarten in half of first grade before I pulled him out. And we had so much time. I remember one snowstorm, you know, he got up at 530. School wasn't until I think eight or something like that. It's so long ago, I forget. But we went out, we like, shoveled, we made a snowman, we had hot chocolate, we came inside, we warmed up, we played Candyland, and then he went to school. And very often, even in kindergarten, he had homework, which was something I didn't love. But we would do his homework in the morning because when he would get out of school, he was so wound up, so wiped out that it didn't make sense to do homework the night of. So we would just, you know, he got up early and we would do the homework in the morning and he was refreshed and it really worked. And we would have these beautiful mornings and he got to school with a full bucket. You know, his emotional bucket was full because we had so much connection time. And as a single mom, again, he always went to bed early and my night times were always, I cave super early. Even now I go to bed at eight 30, but back then I went to bed at like seven because like, I was strung out. He was strung out. It's like, everybody just go to bed. And we had this just great routine of being refreshed in the morning. And not that the way I did it is the way you have to do it, but I do suggest it because we had these beautiful moments where he was refreshed, I was refreshed, and it wasn't, um, you know, I think sometimes we try to get that connection time the day of, and everybody's just tired. Like if everybody's tired, the best thing you can do is just everybody go to bed. And then in the morning, have these beautiful mornings. And so again, I'm encouraging you guys to do that. Not because I think I'm like the be all to end all, <laughs> but it was so nice knowing that he went to school with a full bucket and I didn't have to play catch up the night of. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. And then don't forget the transitional objects. So if your child's heading, especially to a new situation, don't forget about transitional objects. So that is any sort of small thing that you can fill, imbue with your love and your child can take it with them. So for example, I had a quartz heart. It was like this tiny little rose quartz heart crystal. And I would quote unquote, fill it at night. I would keep it under my pillow and fill it with mama love. And I would put it in his lunchbox. And when he got to school and he opened his lunchbox, you know, he had his, his mama love with him. So that's a transitional object, right? It helps ease the transition. And it was awesome because it was this like gauge. It would be so cute. He'd get home from school and obviously you're like, how was your day? And sometimes he would hand me the, the courts and he would say, this is empty. It's all empty. I need mama love. And it was a great gauge of how his day went without having to ask a lot of questions. I don't even know what happened, but he was tired. He was strung out. He was on empty. And so I knew to lean in with more connection time, right? And then other days he'd come home and I'd be like, hey, where's your, where's your heart? And he was like, oh, I don't even know. I think it's still in my lunchbox. And that was a gauge that his day went great. He wasn't strung out, whatever happened. Because a lot of times when our kids get home from school at this young age, we're like, hey, what'd you learn? What'd you do? What'd you, you know, and they're not accurate reporters. So it's really nice to just get their emotional climate with this transitional object. Again, I used a rose court heart, but you can, some people use like those rubber bracelets, you know, like the ones like, I can only think of like breast cancer or live strong or something. 
It could be that. It could be anything like maybe a silicone ring. It doesn't have to be anything big. It can even be like a popsicle stick or a rock. It doesn't have to be something fancy, but you can fill it with your quote unquote love. And then your child takes it and transitional objects can be so helpful in these big moves, these big steps forward. All right, you guys, that's all I have for today. As always, I appreciate you. I appreciate you listening and I hope you have a beautiful day. Rock on. Okay, bye everyone. Just a reminder, if you need additional resources, I have Oh Crap Potty Training. I have Oh Crap, I Have a Toddler. Those books are available everywhere you want to find a book. (laughs) You can also go to my website, jamieglowacki.com, where you can book private sessions with me by any of my courses. Those are really geared towards potty training help. And also I'm on Instagram. I'm not on Facebook anymore and I'm not on Twitter. I'm on Instagram, jamie.glowacki. And I do a lot of lives and uh, usually posting a lot of good information. So those are extra resources for you. And as always, rock on. Have an awesome day.